Yaron, uh, Tom Burrows. Um, I'm a, one of those wealth management journalists. Um, question about um, insider dealing. One of my favourite speeches in any Hollywood movie is when Michael Douglas gives his famous Greed is Good speech at the uh, Roosevelt Hotel, to be exact. And I once likened it as um, Ayn Rand on acid in terms of its um, brilliance of that speech. I want to ask you about insider dealing. Sure. W what's your view about it? Should they be legalized? Should it be up to individual exchanges to decide as to whether certain forms of transactions should be on or off? I mean, what's your view about insider dealing in general? Well, let me first say something about Michael Douglas' speech, because it is a brilliant speech and true. From the first word to the last word, 100% true. And what's amazing is it's in the voice of the villain. He's the bad guy, and it's purposefully done, right? So you're sh because the audience assumes everything he said was wrong because he's the villain. And not only that, as soon as he finishes, I mean, Oliver Stone is a brilliant movie maker. As soon as he finishes, I don't know if you remember what song comes on. I mean, the camera switches to the SEC investigating him. That's the first scene after he finishes his speech. And a song comes on. It's Frank Sinatra, Let Us Dance Among the Stars, da da da. In other words, this is all frivolous nonsense. That's the kind of emotional response that Oliver Stone is trying to evoke, even though, as you say, the speech is brilliant. Later on, Michael Douglas gives his real speech, where he says, we financiers, it's all zero sum. Everything we make is somebody else's expenses. If I make, it means you lose, which, which is the real Michael Douglas speech, which is what really represents Oliver Stone's view of, of finance and of, uh, of, of that character. Um, I agree with you, I think, in, in terms of insider trading. Um, insider trading should not be criminalized. It should be up to the exchanges and up to the relationship between shareholders and management. So it's obvious that you never want the CEO to short his own shares, right? Because that creates some pretty perverse incentives. Um, but there, there's law in the books that would protect you from doing that, like fiduciary duty. Right? It would violate his fiduciary duty to maximize shareholder wealth. So you don't need a whole new set of laws to prevent him from shorting his own stock. You could also have, if you believe that the insider trading was bad, and there's, there's conflicting literature on this, uh, you could have shareholders write into the contract when they hire the CEO, you cannot trade in the stock except under these conditions, which is fine. I think the more interesting solution is if you had different exchanges, have different insider trading regimes, and let them compete. So and, and you want to list at the NYC? We don't allow any insider trading. We're very strict about this, and we have very strict rules. But in the NASDAQ, we're kind of loose about it. You want to tra insider trade? Fine. And let's see who wins, right? Let's see what regime actually works. This is not something that you can um, abstractly figure out uh, the, the right context, and it might be different for different industries. It might be different. It's like accounting standards. I don't believe in accounting standards dictated from the top. I believe there should be competing accounting standards, and, and exchanges can adopt particular accounting standards that are different than other exchanges, and we'd have a much more competitive, vibrant, I think, corporate governance world than we do today. I think corporate governance is, is stifling, it's, it's, it's destructive to productivity the way it's structured today. I, I had a, a very unfortunate friend who was a, a dealer, and he was at lunch and was given some very sensitive market information quite illegally. Um, but then he was conflicted because there was one regulation saying he had to tell his clients that he knew this, and another one saying if he did tell his clients, that would be insider trading. So he went to jail whichever way, very unfortunate.